good evening everyone in this session uh, we will mainly discuss about the allotropes of the carbon as well as the last topic of bonding which is about the metallic bond so what is the definition of allotrope the term allotrope means same atoms but different arrangement different structures so when we the term allotrope means when we have same atoms same type of atom but they have different arrangement we call that as allotrope so the allotropes of the carbon we already discussed in igcse o levels that about the diamond and graphite the only two we discuss in igcse so what happen in case of diamond how a diamond is formed each carbon is forming a four covalent bond and it will have a tetrahedral structure the uh, macromolecular tetrahedral structure with a bond angle of 109.5 what about graphite graphite is having a layer structure uh, there is attraction between the layers but that is weak attraction that, that's why the layers can slide over each other and graphite is a brittle material what about fullerene it's like a sphere which is made up of the whole structure like carbon atoms there is no end point there is no starting or ending point so and there are finite number like normally there are 60 to maximum 540 carbon atoms are there in this structure so it very depends on different fullerenes have different uh, number of the carbon atom but what is a simple structure that when the whole sphere is formed by the carbon atoms what we call we call that as fullerene and carbon nanotubes you have heard this name about the nanotubes so basically graphene and nanotubes are close to each other and they are originated from graphite because in case of graphite what happen graphite is having a layer structure like we have six carbon atoms So this is one layer of a graphite and this will be the second layer of the graphite now what happen in case of graphite there is a layer structure one layer and the second layer but what we will do if we remove all, only single layer is there if we have only one layer or the single layer and we fold that layer like example uh, you take a paper and you join one end of a paper to another so what it will make it will make a cylindrical structure and that cylindrical structure is known as carbon nanotube so if we take only one layer then we what we call we call that as a graphene because why graphene because it is taken from graphite that's why graph and why ene is there because there are double bond that's why it is ene but if we fold this and form a a cylindrical structure what we call we call that as a carbon nanotube so these are the allotropes of the carbon we have diamond we have graphite we have fullerene nanotubes as well as graphenes is it clear first the concept of the allotrope 
that they have identical atoms with different structure and for carbon we can have different allotropes any doubt till this point so what is graphene basically graphene is allotrope of a carbon it consists of a single layer of atoms arranged in two dimension like a honeycomb lattice is there a nano structure so basically graphene and nanotubes are very close to each other if a graphene is there we fold one layer like we connect one side of a graphene to another and we make a cylindrical structure it will become carbon nanotube what are the properties of graphene graphene is the strongest compound or strongest substance basically it is 100 to 300 times stronger than steel that is one thing so graphene is more suitable for bulletproof vest as compared to other materials like it can it because it's 100 to 300 times stronger than steel and it is the thinnest nano material because one atom thick layer is there of a graphite so it's also very thin and it is bendable and stretchable both things are there it can stretch up to 20% of its original length maybe you have seen the flexible and uh, nowadays you will find the flexible screens are there for gadgets for devices such as mobile or tablets so what what is the main layer structure is there so their top layer is having a graphene and it is excellent conductor of heat and electricity so heat conductivity can be about 3000 watt so electron mobility in graphene can build up to 115000 cm square per volt so it is a good conductor as well is it clear uh, the characteristic of the graphene any doubt in any of the property so there are many uses for graphene as graphene has a lot of promises of additional applications such as anti corrosion coating like example normally what we do if we want to resist the corrosion we paint the surface that is what we do but there's also another way of protecting the surface from corrosion is by covering that with a layer of a graphene and it will be very thin and it will not rust because the top layer is not the substance is not exposed to the outer atmosphere so it will be anti corrosion and it is efficient and precise sensor faster efficient and it can be used in electronics flexible displays even the top layer of a solar cell and faster dna sequencing it can also be used to transfer the drug so there are many uses for this graphene then when we compare the structures of a diamond and graphite so what we have for in case of a graphite what we have we have a layer structures so if i want to convert graphite into graphene so what we do we just simply take only one layer out and it will have some double bonds within the structure so what it turn into the graphite is turned into graph because it is from graphite and ene because there is a double bond so what are the properties when we compare for graphite so graphite is having a layer structure where diamond when you can see this diamond each carbon has four covalent bonds where in case of graphite each carbon has three covalent bonds and between the layers there is a weak van der waal force so layers can slide over each other that's why graphite is soft and slippery the carbon atoms link together with a giant lattice 
here a hexagon is there a layer structure on top of each other an electron can move through the layer so if electron is here it can move from one layer to another that's why graphite can also conduct electricity they do not conduct electricity they have high melting point and insoluble in water the diamond but for graphite it can conduct electricity having high melting point as well as insoluble in water the diamond it's hardest substance known so it is a hard and colorless transparent crystal which sparkle in light whereas graphite is a soft dark shiny solid it is also a brittle like uh, brittle term brittle refers to when you try to deform it can break without changing the shape and the uses of the diamond it can be used for jewelry glass cutters polishers whereas graphite can be used as lubricant pencil or electrodes so you have to learn graphite the uses of graphite diamond as well as graphene so these are the three there are allotropes but you don't have to learn all of it you have to learn about graphene diamond and graphite only then what about the metallic bond or what is the concept of the metallic bond in metals what we have we have a lattice of a positive ion and the delocalized electron arrange themselves the lattice of a positive ion or a giant structure is there and delocalized electron so these electron can move within the structure anywhere the attraction between the positive ion and the electron is refers to the metallic bond so the there are the three main factors on which the strength of a metallic bond depends number 1 the number of the protons or the nuclear charge if there is a greater nuclear charge there will be strong metallic bond it also depends on number of the delocalized electron per atom if there are more number of delocalized electron per atom so there will be stronger bond as well and it also depends on the size of the ions the size of a positive ion should be small as possible so they can attract the electron easily when we compare the melting point of three metals example we have sodium na we have magnesium which is mg and aluminum which is al so in the structure of sodium magnesium and aluminum so when we compare the positive ions the sodium ions are larger compared to magnesium which are relatively smaller compared to that of sodium and that is much smaller as compared to aluminum so when we compare which one will have the highest melting point because the melting point depends on the strength of a metallic bond all of them have metallic bond in case of sodium it will be a plus charge in case of magnesium it will be a plus 2 charge on the uh, positive ion whereas in case of aluminum it will be plus 3 charge so because aluminum is uh, the positive ion is having a greater net charge that's why when it is attracting the delocalized electron here in case of sodium here each is producing two here each is producing three electrons so when we compare the strength of the metallic bond all will have metallic bond so but in case of aluminum it will be a strong metallic bond and what is the reason why aluminum is having a strong metallic bond than magnesium and sodium number 1 the size of the positive ion is smaller number 2 there are more electrons 
per unit volume so more electron means stronger attraction is there between or greater attraction between the positive ions and the electron and number 3 is the size is smaller so attraction is also stronger so when we compare the melting point for the metals as we move across what we'll observe for metals the melting point will increase is it clear uh, the trend in the melting point for the metals across the period then how to explain the shape for the metals magnesium has a strong metallic bond as compared to uh, that of sodium because it's having a greater charge smaller uh, ion is there and a attra stronger attraction will be there now when we compare the structures the bonding first one is ion ionic bond so ionic bond the electrostatic attraction between the positive and negative ions it will have a giant lattice but that lattice will have alternate positive and negative ions example like sodium chloride or magnesium oxide whereas covalent bond it's formed by a sharing of electron simple covalent bond it's uh, the between the molecule it's a weak van der waal force and we'll have finite number of atom finite number of atoms in the molecule such as carbon dioxide water methane but macromolecules such as diamond graphite silicon four oxide silicon graphene uh, fullerene so these all are carbon nanotubes they all have a macro molecular structure Co covalent bond is there but the structure contain infinite number of atoms even for fullerene it's about 60 carbon atoms but it is also refers to a large or a macro molecular structure what about the metallic bond that's a electrostatic attraction between the positive ion and the delocalized electron so all the metals have this identical structure when we compare the property like the boiling and melting point for ionic compounds they have high because what is the reason for that because there is a giant lattice so a strong attraction is there between the oppositely charged ion for simple molecular structure it is low because there is a weak intermolecular force or we also say van der waals force for the macromolecules they will have high melting point because strong covalent bonds are there covalent bonds are always stronger so the covalent bonds are there which link the molecules with each other leads to like you have to break lot of bonds that's why the melting point increases and same thing for metals metallic bond um, they have metallic bonds so strong electrostatic force between the positive ion and the c of electron when we compare the solubility generally most of the ionic compound are soluble but not all generally poor for simple molecular macro molecule insoluble and metals are also insoluble in water conductivity when solid they cannot conduct because for ion ions are not free to move ions can only vibrate but they are not free to move for molecular they don't have free ions or electron that's why they cannot conduct for diamond it and silicon four oxide it cannot but graphite and graphene both can conduct electricity metallic bonding because there's a free electron so that's why it can conduct conductivity in a molten state they can conduct Uh, molecular cannot macro molecular except graphite and graphene so they cannot and metallic it is good general general description means like how we explain the idea so they are generally crystalline solid like they have a regular arrangement of the ions mostly gases and liquids are their simple molecular macro molecular all solid and metals they are shiny malleable the layers can slide over each other without breaking so this was topic 3 which was about bonding and structure so we started with 
ionic bonding then we discuss the concept of the ionic bonding and using a lattice energy uh, like definitions of the lattice energy electron affinity and ionization energy then we move on to a covalent bonding first we start with a simple covalent bonding and then we discuss the dative covalent and covalent compounds covalent substances can be simple molecular or it can be macromolecular and at the last we discuss metals is it clear uh, the whole topic anyone having a doubt or a question related to topic 3